So Flappy Bird, who's not played Flappy Bird or at least heard of Flappy Bird, it's one of the most popular mobile games ever, was launched in May 2013 by Vietnam-based developer Dong Nian. And uh, by January 2014, it had generated 50 million downloads, making it one of the most popular mobile games on Android and iOS app stores. And according to the author, the game generated $50,000 a day in in-app advertising. And the game was quickly uh, criticized for its addictive nature and the developer removed the game from the app stores in February 2014, citing guilt as a major reason. So a hugely popular game and we are going to be making it today using Godot and uh, the only thing I assume because this is a beginner's tutorial is that you have Godot installed on your computer and if you haven't go to godotengine.org and download it and get back as soon as possible and we'll get rolling all right so let's first look at this version of flappy bird which is on flappybird.io and will be our template as you see the bird is jumping up and down moving in the y-axis but it is not moving in the x-axis so the illusion of the bird moving is caused by the pipes and the floor which are moving when you pass the gaps in the pipes you get one point and if you crash into the pipes you die and the same thing if you crash into the floor but not if you crash into the ceiling so you jump with either the mouse click or by pressing spacebar and there's a points counter and when you die at the end there is a menu and a high, with a high score <clears throat> and we will not be recreating the share and add to leaderboard functionality uh, also one detail you might notice there is no parallax effect in the background and there is no sound so we won't be doing that in this tutorial so uh, let's get to it shall we let's go into Godot and start to make this game so here we are inside of Godot and this is where you'll see all of your projects if you just installed Godot this might be empty as you see here I've already got quite a few projects and for many of them I've done devlogs on my YouTube channel including this one Booze and Betrayal which I just released on itch.io anyway there are links to all of that in the description below so let's start a new project here so we need to navigate to where we want our Godot projects to be stored and I've got mine in documents Godot here select current folder and we need to give our project a name and I will call it flappy bird tutorial create folder and create and edit and let's go all right, so we got our new project started and we begin on this screen, which is the default. And before we do anything else, let's just import our assets. There is a download link in the description with all the asset files that we're going to be using. So just go there and get the files, save them somewhere on your computer, or you could just drag them directly into Godot. But I'll just make a new folder here under the res directory and I'll call it assets. And then I'll just drag all of these resource files into that folder like this. So they should be here now. And for a bigger project, we might want to structure this a bit better. But for a small one like this, I'll just dump it all into one folder quick and simple. So we start out by creating a generic container for everything else in the game. And we do this by going to other node and nodes and create and we're just gonna rename this to main and this will be our container for everything else in the game so in Godot there are two central concepts which is node and scene and I encourage you to go and read up on this for yourself on the Godot docs here uh, so basically in Godot everything is a node or a scene and uh, a node is the fundamental building blocks of Godot and they could be things like a sprite or a collision box or an audio player or whatever really and a scene is a tree of nodes which is just several nodes bunched up together. So this is not that hard when you wrap your head around it but just go and read up on this for yourself on the Godot docs. First thing I'd like to create is the background and for this I'll create a sprite 
So just uh, right click on main here and add a child node and we'll type in here sprite like this and just rename this background by double clicking and typing in background. And then this needs a texture and we're going to be using this one called background. And I'll just drag this over here to texture like this. And this image has got dimensions of 150 by 200 and I want this to be 450 by 600. So I'll just click here on transform and I'll scale it up by a factor of three here under scale. And that will just scale up the image a little bit. So that's the background. Let's save this main scene now and you can do this by either pressing Ctrl S or Command S on a Mac or by going to the scene menu here and clicking save scene. And I'll just create a new folder here called scenes and I'll just save it in there. So let's try to run this and see if everything is as expected. So we do this by pressing this little uh, uh, play button up here like this. And then we get a message saying that we have no main scene defined. So we need to select a main scene. So just click here, select, and we choose our main scene here. All right. So that's maybe not quite as expected, but we'll fix that in a moment. I guess we could get away without using a camera in this case, but I'd like to create one anyway. I just feel this will give us more control over the viewport and also it could come in handy with debugging and seeing more clearly what's going on in some instances. So I'll create a camera here by adding a child node to the main and I'll just look up here camera 2D like this. So to actually use this camera, we need to tick this box here where it says current. Uh, so you could have several cameras in your game and the one that you use at any time needs to be the current one. So just tick this and then we see this purple box around here, which will show us what is going to be shown in the game. So when I click play here, this is exactly what's going to be shown in the game. So this looks better, but not quite as I want it to be. And I think using a camera like this really helps to uh, see what's going on when we're developing the game. To fix the aspect ratio, we need to go into the project settings up here. Make sure we are under the general tab and scroll down to the display here and click window. So then we can see the width and the height of the game here. And by default, it is 1024 by 600, but we want this to be 450 by 600. So I'll just change the width of the game here to 450 and I'll close this. So then we can see the purple rectangle around here, just encompassing our background. So if we run this now, this works just like we want it to. So cool. Okay, so we got our background and we got our camera and now we'd like to add some moving parts to the game and let's start with the easiest one, which is the floor. So for moving objects that can interact with other objects, we can use the kinematic body. So let's add that. So we uh, right click on main and add a child mode and we'll look up here kinematic body 2D. So we add that. And for this to be of any use, we need to add some other parts to this. And let's start by adding a sprite. So right click and add child node and look up sprite like this. And for this, we're going to be using this texture here called floor.png. So let's just drag that over here. So this is a little bit too small, so we need to scale this up as well. And we do this here on the transform and I just enter here three and three like this if we zoom in on this one we can see that it is a little bit blurred out so to fix that we can click here and import and untick this filter box and re-import and that will make it a lot more crisp 
and then we want we don't want this in this position we want it a little bit more down so let's go into scene and uh, choose the kinematic body here and go on transform and we could set the position here where we want it so let's try the y position for let's say 100 uh, we need it further down 200 300 so that looks fine to me now if we run this we see that the ground is standing still obviously and we want this to move as it does in flappy bird let's first rename this kinematic body 2d to floor so that it is more clearly labeled and to make something move or in fact to have any other type of behavior we need to use a script so i'll add a script to our floor i could have controlled this from the main or somewhere else and we will add a script to our main later but it's a good thing to try to keep code that relates to the object in the object itself so we'll just add a script to the floor by selecting the floor here and clicking this little icon up here and we just call this script floor gd this is the script where we define all the logic and behavior of our object so i'll just remove most of these lines prefixed with a hashtag they are just comments oops just remove these and accept uh, this one at the bottom where it says funk process delta um, we'll need this but i'll uncomment this by removing the hashtag so here we got our basic script, which contains two functions for now. The ready function, which is going to be called once when the program starts. And the process function, which is going to be called continuously over and over again, as long as the program is running. To make the floor move from right to left, we will need to change the x value of the floor. And we'll do that here in the process function, which will run over and over again. The kinematic body 2D and other 2D nodes have a built-in variable called global position, which is a two-dimensional vector element, and we can access the x value like this. Now we want this to change every frame, and if we subtract a number from the x value here, this will execute every frame, and the floor will move from right to left. So let's just try to subtract here 100, pretty random. Let's now explain this delta variable here a little bit. So simply explain the frame rate of your game can change while you're playing and it will probably change. And this delta variable is really the time elapsed between two frames at any given moment. So to ensure that the game is running at a consistent speed, if we multiply this scroll speed here by delta, this will mean that the floor is moving at 100 pixels now in one second regardless of the frame rate that you're running at any given moment so the frame rate of your game could be high or low and the floor would still be running at the same speed there are other ways to do this and maybe better ways which we will cover later in this tutorial but for now we'll just leave it like this and this will be just fine all right so let's run the game and see what happens now so cool, the floor is moving. Problem is that it's just moving out of the screen and just staying there. That's not what we want, obviously, but we'll fix that pretty soon now. But first, let's change the code a little bit and make it a little cleaner. So we got now this little piece of code here where we're subtracting 100 times delta from the global x value. So the problem here is with readability. We should strive to make our code as readable as possible and as easy to understand as possible and easy to change and if we come back to our code now in a month or a year or someone else looks at our code this is a little lacking in context and a little hard to understand what this is all about so this 100 here is what we call a magic number so what does it mean we don't know so to make this a little bit more readable we'll use a variable instead and give it a clear and understandable name so i'll do that up here so I'll say var and I give it a clear name, which is going to be scroll speed. And I'll set this to 150, uh, sorry, 100. And then I'll change this 100 down here into the name of the variable, scroll speed. And that makes this a lot more readable for our future selves and for other people.
Good. Now let us look at how to make this a continuous scrolling floor. So what I want to do is actually make two pieces of floor stacked next to each other. And when the first one has exited the screen over here on the left hand side, we want it to jump over to the other side, to the right hand side, and then keep scrolling. And that will give us the illusion of a continuous rolling floor, especially since the sprite image here is designed to look seamless when stacked next to each other. All right, so let's look at the coordinates. When the sprite is in the middle, the X coordinate is zero and we know the screen is 450 pixels wide. So when the sprite is on the left hand side, it will be minus 450. And when it's on the right hand side, it will be 450. And the difference here is 900 pixels. So we want the sprite here to move over when the X position is minus 450 or less. So we just do that in the script here in the process function. So I'll put an if statement here, if global position dot X is less than minus 450. I will add 900 to the X position. And the reason why I don't put this to exactly 900 is that I don't know if this number here is going to be minus 450 and a tiny fraction. So to make sure the two sprites are stacked tightly together, I just add 900 here. Before we run the game now, I'd like to zoom the camera out a little bit so we can see more clearly what's going on. So I click the camera here and I go into zoom and I put both of these to two and that will zoom out the camera. And when I run the game now here, all right, so we see that this is working as expected. So that's good. Now we got one of the floor pieces done. So let's actually save this floor element as its own scene. So let's right click here and uh, choose save branch as scene. And I'll save it in here as floor.tscn. So this will actually separate this out and we can later pretty easily duplicate this. Now if we right click here on floor and select duplicate this will make another instance of this scene like this we have here floor one and floor two and they will have the same properties and they will also share the same script if we now just change the starting position of one of these here under transform let's put the x position here at 450 so they should be stacked next to each other and we just run the game now and see if this works and uh, let's see here so sure enough, this works. So let's just zoom the camera back in again and see how that looks. All right, so cool. This seems to work pretty fine. Now, just for the sake of organizing the code a bit more, let's create a basic container node for both of the floor pieces here. So I'll add a child node under main, just a normal node here. And I'll call this floors and I'll put both of these floors inside of that one. All right, so we got now our background, we got our camera and we got our ground moving. So let's take a break here and in part two, uh, coming out soon, we'll be looking at the pipes and some other stuff. If you like this tutorial, please click the like button. That will help spread this content to more people, giving more people the opportunity to learn Godot. And also, if you like more tutorials like this, click the subscribe button. And I'll see you in the next video.